Hello and welcome to, again to another tutorial on how to make a game in XNA. And in the last tutorial we were uh, trying to make a map reader or basically something to read an XML file like this, uh, read this data, and output and create objects, basically reading a map. So uh, we were creating a split object method and so we're going to continue uh, creating this. So after you're uh, removing, remove, after removes all, unless, I'm going to spell it wrong, unnecessary uh, text, it's going to uh, try to split and distinguish all these object, uh, all these object tags. So let's see how we're going to split this. Uh, what we could do is find this tag and split it like that. So remove the first ins occurring instance of that and then uh, splitting it by this. So that's one way. Or we could do it using uh, this tag, which might make more sense. Um, actually, you know, I'm going to use it this. I'm going to split it using that. So this is going to be our keyword. So string, uh, let's see, key, uh, split. Just name is key split equals that. So that's going to be our key splitting string. So this is how we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to have to make a integer called position, and this will be equal to zero. And this will basically store the position at which we are at in the string. So this is how the program is going to run. It's going to look at, th these are going to be removed. It's going to look at, and all the tabs and other stuff is going to be removed too. So it's going to try to find this, that exact uh, string combination, and it's going to find the first instance of that, remove it, and then find the next one, uh, and split it from there split it from there, split it from there, split it from there, and put that in an array. So that's how that's going to work. So that's what we plan on doing. And uh, this position variable will keep track of where we are. So make a while loop. While uh, position, actually, while position is does not equal negative 1. So negative 1, uh, there's actually Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. There's this function called index of. So you can you can call it on any string. So index of, and then you can find like O. So what this does is it finds the first instance of O and returns an integer. So this position, let's say, would be 0, and this position would be O. So it would go and find the first instance of that string, and it would output or return the position of that O it found, which is 1. So that's why we need this position variable to keep track of where that O is actually located. So after we find the position, we can do many things like remove it, add another character in there, do whatever we want. So that's why we need that. Uh, and if it can't find O, it returns negative 1. So basically we're saying while the position does not equal negative one, or basically, while it has uh, f uh, kept finding something, while it's still finding something, it will do something in here. So, uh, what we need to do is keep finding uh, next object. So this is how it's going to do it. Uh, at the end of it, it's going to say we're going to set a position to a new integer so we'll say uh, xml string dot index of and then our key is going to be our key split and position plus one so you might be noticing I'm adding a new argument in this index of which is an integer which is uh, that's the position plus one the reason I'm doing this is because if you override the method and put an integer uh, sorry and put an integer in it, what it'll do is it will start searching after this point. 
or it will start searching at that point. So, for example, like, uh, let's say, hmm, let me give an example. Let's say, hello, hello, hello. Uh, let's say some random words in here. Uh, what if I want to find hellos? I want to find uh, all the hellos and see how many there are. So first, it will search index of, okay, I found a hello. Uh, now I'll start searching again. It's going to start at the beginning. Oh, I found hello. I'll start searching again. Oh, I found hello. So we don't want it to, to do that. We want it to search through all the hellos and stop when it hasn't found any more. So the way to do that is add this position here. So if we say hello, if you find hello, this position is where the H would be, the starting character. So that would be zero. So position plus one would be, so zero plus one would be one, of course. So it would start searching at E. Well, I can't find hello here, so I'll keep moving until I found hello. Oh, I found hello. Okay, and that's position at uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's at position nine. So it stores that. And then the next time it starts searching, starting from position 10. So I think you get it. Uh, so that's basically what we're doing here. We're going to keep finding the next object. OK, so but we want to set the position equal to that right away. And we're going to get rid of that, because we want to start at the beginning the first time. So once we know the position of that object, uh, what we can do actually the first one so if position is not equal negative one the first time this instance occurs it's going to be a little bit different so uh, this is what I'm going to do actually I'm going to copy this and paste it after that while so this is going to be the first time first time and this will be the rest of the time rest of the time so then the first time we want to erase the object right here. So it's going to be, uh, let's see. So we want to erase starting from there. So XML string will equal XML string dot remove. And the starting index will be position. And the count will be key split dot length. So uh, this is basically what it's going to do. It's going to remove. Uh, that object is starting it's going to remove a string starting from where it found the object class and it's going to count uh, the length of our object string which is our key split string which is right there so it's going to basically remove that first string object uh, string right here so uh, I'll show you why we need to do this later uh, we're actually running out of time so now the next thing we have to do for the rest of them is actually we don't need this. We don't we don't really need this. I just realized that. Yeah, actually I just realized we don't need this. <laughs> okay, that was sort of dumb. Sorry guys. Uh okay, so this is how we're gonna do it. So once we remove that first thing, this it's that simple it's as simple as this. Uh, just create a string array, call it XML string array, or what do we call it here? Uh, and we're going to do this XML string array equals XML string dot split, and then we're going to uh, split it using our key split string. And that's it's, it's as simple as that, and we just return the XML string array. Actually, you know what we can do? We can just return this right here. We don't have to put it in a variable. So just get rid of that. Okay, I just wasted a lot of time. I'm apologize about that. Uh, and it's actually giving us an error. I don't know why. So it says cannot convert string to char array. Okay, just a second. Okay, actually let's uh, put it in a variable. I don't understand though. Why is this not doing it? Okay. I think we have to declare this here equals new string. Actually, no, we you know this is not necessary. 
Okay, I remember. You can't split things with a string. So, uh, forget that whole thing. I changed my mind. We actually do need this. And uh, I don't think we need this. So, what we can do is take our string array. String array. Actually, let's just make this a list. List. And then, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, after that. After we make the string list, we're going to have to try to find its length. So to find its length, we need its start. We need to know where the start of the string is and the end of the string is. Pretty simple, right? So the start of the string is definitely, is obviously the position. The end of the string is where we can find uh, this XML string dot index of of our key string. Actually, we need to know where this is right here. So, see right here? Actually, it's, never mind. I used the wrong slash. We need to know where that is. And we, know, we need to know where it is from position plus one. So, uh, we need to know where that the next occurring string combination of that is and that's the indication of the end of that attribute and so the end the length of it will be the start start or actually end minus start end minus start and just gonna make sure test it so if we find hello we want to find h h is zero hello o is one two three four uh, four minus zero is four one two three four actually we need to make this plus one so end plus one equals that so and it's going to equal one plus one so end will equal five so there we go uh, then we need to find the substring so string array and we're going to add the substring to the string array and the substring is basically yeah a part of the string. Actually, we're running sort of way over time, so we have to make this really fast. So string array equals XML string dot substring uh, start index is start uh, length is length, and that's all we need. Oh, I forgot to call the add, so we have to make it. Uh, we have to say string array dot add, and that should fix some of our errors. Uh, oopsies, what's it saying? It says not all. It says, uh, okay, I didn't make it equal to a list, so just say string array equals new list. So just make sure you do that, and all your errors sh should go away. You should still have a couple, but we're going to fix those in the next tutorial. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please uh, give it a thumbs up subscribe and I'll hope to see you in the next tutorial.